Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Shanae Levin. When I got connected to Johan from Gitpod, I started thinking about what I wanted to share about the developer experience. This conference, which I'm so honored to be at, is about our daily experience when trying to get the job done and how that experience should be efficient, sustainable, and joyful. And as I thought more about it, the thing that felt most authentic to me was that our experience as developers suck compared to this ideal. And you should be pissed about that. Our day-to-day -day experience is filled with practices that are inefficient, panic-ridden, and just a downright utter slog. Let me illustrate to you what I mean. I want to take you back to 2018, and I'm a senior director of product at Docker. And I was so excited. I'm in a new position. I'm working on really complex technical challenges for developers just like me on a technology that I'm really passionate about. And, this, and I thought this is going to be great. One of the many features that our dev team was working on was the ability to launch the number of security vulnerabilities in Docker images in Docker Hub. This was a feature that was going to make a huge impact for millions of developers all over the world. And then two days before the launch, the whole team were sitting around a table bug bashing as we always did before a major release. And one of my colleagues finds the number of vulnerabilities on the front end isn't matching the number on the back end. So our team is digging around and we look at each other and we literally have no idea why it's doing this. Finally, we isolate the problem. We think it's coming from this really critical part of the code base. We ask each other, does, does anybody know this area of the code base? And none of us do. So my heart starts to race a little bit. No big deal. So I asked, is, who does know this part of the code base? And one of my team members says, well, this other person is the expert on that. And I say, great, let, let's ask him. And my colleague says he's no longer with Docker. And my heart sank. And I ask, is, is he the only person? So there's literally no one left at all. And then panic. With no one left to ask, we do what anyone would do. We start scrambling to find old documentation to try to find some inclination of how this works. We're trying to hunt down old documents, remember old search terms, but nothing was coming up no matter how hard we tried. And our hypothesis was if there was documentation, it was owned by the folks who had left and we didn't have access to it. So then there's only one thing left to do, which is read the code. One of my team members shouts out, it's going to take us a month to understand all of this. This part of the code base was so critical that we were all terrified that if we touch it and we broke it, it was going to cause catastrophic downstream effects of something else. And with the launch happening in two days, there was simply no time to be confident that we can make the necessary fixes. And this happens all the time. I know I'm not the only one with this experience. And here's what I took away from that. Our day-to-day -day process is basically outlined by, by the SDLC, right? Plan, code, build, test, release, deploy, operate, and monitor. But there's one thing that we do every day that no one talks about. And that is one of the main culprits of the inefficiency, dismay, and panic. And that is our ability to understand how our systems work. We as engineers do not know at any given point how our entire system works. And I'm sure you're thinking, of course not. There's too much code for any one developer to know. And that is precisely my point. We all tend to practice what's called just-in-time understanding. Since it's so grueling to learn everything, we learn just enough to get our tasks done. So why is it so hard to understand how the system works? Well, one, the process of reading and understanding code is inefficient. We read code one line at a time and imagine how our systems work. And there's very little to help us make sense of the code. The data is abstracted with types or it's literally completely missing if, the, if it's untyped. But reading and understanding code is at least 60% of the job between onboarding, debugging, code reviews, and feature work. But reading is the most manual way to extract information out of code. It doesn't scale, and it leads to incomplete information and uncertainty. For every other part of our daily lives, we optimize it. We have tools. Two, the way we understand code is missing key information. If you're reading the code, you never really understand why the previous developers did what they did. I don't know one developer 
who consistently puts why they did what they did in a comment. But even if that thought process was captured, code bases are changing all the time. It quickly gets out of date. Our code bases are changing with literally every single pull request. It's no wonder why we don't document anything. Not only is it hard and inefficient, but every developer is building up their own unique understanding of how the code base works. That understanding walks right out of the door with each engineer when they leave. When it's in our heads, it's harder to share with others or collaborate on. It's also using up valuable brain power that could be used to solve the actual problem that we're trying to solve. So all of this is happening. And I remember I had my head in my hands and I think, why is all of this happening? And that quickly turned to me being pissed off. I thought, how is it that we never know how our code bases work? Because as I reflected, this wasn't the first or the second or the third time that this has happened. And these like snippets of conversations started popping up in my head, like debates over how we think something works, waiting several months for other engineers to get on board to the team, or worse, that one phrase, you know, we don't know until we get in there. And I thought there has to be a better way. We're making amazing, sophisticated tools to get understanding out of under other industries. Cancer detection, semantic meaning with GPT-3 and summary generation. And yet at any given moment, I have to code die for days or weeks to understand how our systems work. So I thought maybe there's something wrong with me. So I started researching to see if someone else has solved this problem before. Lots of research. The oldest one that I could find was in a blog post by Tudor Gerba. And he found in a book in 1979 by Zelkowitz, Shaw, and Gannett entitled The Principles of Software Engineering and Design. And it said that the most development time was spent on maintenance. In more recent papers, it's now called program comprehension, but it's essentially the same problem. Turns out we've been trying to solve this problem for 40 years. Yes, there is an engineering problem that we do every day that has not been solved and has been staring us in the face for 40 years. So I started talking to other engineers to validate the problem and to try to figure out how this is all happening. One engineer I spoke to was the first engineer at his company, and he had now you know, ascended to be on the leadership team. So his team of five started to build this feature. For one reason or another, no one told the team that this feature was more complicated than they knew. So the engineers thought that they knew everything of how the feature worked. They worked on the feature, released it, and then broke everything. The team reverted all their work and started over. The whole team spent another, another couple of weeks code diving, drawing diagrams of how the surrounding code worked until they could put together a plan, a new plan to build the feature correctly from scratch. There was nothing at this company that helped them to know that the problem was more complex than they thought. And because one conversation was missed, there was weeks of wasted time and effort. Spoke to another engineer whose company had code no one would touch. 90% of the traffic flowed through this one feature. So if you mess it up, the site goes down. It's super complicated, super scary. And the way it was written, it was really easy to make expensive queries without knowing it. And it was just too expensive to ramp up anyone on the code. So they just like didn't fix any bugs or build any new features on it for years. We live every single day with this day-to-day -day stress that our code could bring an entire company down, not to mention if we work on code that saves lives. That's pretty stressful. So here's where I landed. We treat this skill of reading code for understanding as a badge of honor that must be earned in order to be a real engineer. And those who struggle with it are told they aren't cut out for engineering. And this is why it hasn't been solved. We treat this as just the necessary part of the job, but code understanding is a separate skill that happens every single day, not just when we're ramping up on a brand new code base. We should treat it as such. Our ability to read and understand code doesn't even show up on the SDLC. The biggest innovation that I've seen is like go to declaration. And it doesn't have to be this way. 
we must build better practices and standards around this. Just because we can't understand everything doesn't mean that we shouldn't make tools to help make understanding easier. Even if we were used to just-in-time understanding, tools can help us be more confident that we have understood enough to get our tasks done without breaking things. So imagine a world at any point you have a question. You can literally just look at a visualization of the, how that system works and quickly be able to understand it instead of struggling to understand just enough to get your test done. Imagine if those visualizations remain connected to the code and dynamically change as your code changes so that it's always up to date. I had the realization that this is possible and I call this phenomenon continuous code understanding as opposed to just in time understanding. Continuous code understanding is the ecosystem of data of how and why our systems work the way that they do. But continuous code understanding is just like a system, like any other system that we can engineer. It's made up of inputs and outputs and can be optimized. And when something gets optimized, you can build tooling around it. So I started looking for tools like this, and of course I find nothing. So game on, that's how Codesy was born. It's our mission to help developers master continuous understanding of code bases. So Codesy is a tool to visually understand how your code works so that you can dynamically document and sharing it continuously. Now we're building amazing, never before seen tools, but let's set Codesy aside for a minute. Whether you trash or not, it's not about us. This is about you. You don't have to live with all of the panic and uncertainty and stress that just-in-time understanding brings. Here's what you can do. The code we write will be read 10 times more often than it was written. Write code that is easy to understand and to read and avoid being clever, no matter how good it feels. Two, write down the why, not just the what. Even if you do say we consider these three options and picked option two, that's still not enough. Why, 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 why? <laughs> if you have to, we can read the code to understand what you did, but the code never tells us why. So please share your brilliance with the world and save future code divers some trouble. Three, actually put links to the decisions and planning docs into your pull requests. It's not enough to just write down why, you have to link it to where someone's gonna find it. When the next person comes along, they don't just want to know how it works. They want to know why you didn't build it some other way that seems better to them. If you consider it an option and have good reasons for not using that option, write it down. Otherwise, the next person has to figure it out all over again. Write tests. Tests are a detailed description of how your code is supposed to work, and they tell you when they get out of date. I hear people ask for documentation all the time that stays up to date automatically, but too often they don't use the auto updating documentation system they already have, tests. Tests actually enable you to go a lot faster. And if your team is struggling to write tests, Maybe you can invest some time to make it easier to write tests in your code base. And finally, build better tools. The continuous understanding space is huge and Code C, it can only build a small portion of it. There's way more to build than we're able to do. So let's build a better ecosystem together. So let's put this all together and go back to Docker for a sec. With better tools, I could have just recorded the execution of scanning an image for vulnerabilities. I would have seen a code execution map of the front end and the back end code. I would have seen how the data changed and where that data transformation was incorrect. And it would have been immediately clear. We could have visualized all the code paths that crossed our proposed change, and we could have confidently considered the downstream effects. We could have fixed the bug and moved on with our lives. We as engineers have been living in a world that's more painful, inefficient, and harder than it needs to be. But the good news is that there are practices that we can engage in to make our everyday lives easier and empower us to get more done. And there are tools on the horizon to help us as well. So I challenge you to make continuous understanding a priority for not only for yourself, but for others, so we can live in a world where our day-to-day -day experience doesn't suck. Thank you.